And dear Lord, we thank you. We are able to pause at this time during a busy, busy week to just give you glory and praise. Dear Lord, we might not be a lot here. There are those who are in the winter jam. Please protect them. Please um, help them to worship you in your uh, love and grace. And dear Lord, be with us here. Uh, fill us with the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, and be with Pastor Mark as he leads us in prayer and reading of your word. Forgive us of our sins, for we always fall short of your glory. And help us to forgive others as much as you've forgiven us. Help us with our selfishness and self-righteousness that we say and do. All these things we ask in the precious name and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much, ladies, for those uh, beautiful hymns. I do appreciate uh, all of you for coming to, tonight. I'd like to invite you to open your Bibles with me in the book of Genesis, chapter 22. And let's read and study together the experience of Abraham. Abraham, I have been <coughs> talking about Abraham since uh, uh, Saturday, last Sabbath. And so today I would like to make this continuation. Open your Bibles with me, Genesis chapter 22. And my Bible is the New King James Version Bible. I would like to read in verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here, I, here am I. Here I am, I mean. The book, of Abraham, uh, the book of Genesis chapter 22 talks not, not only about Abraham's faith, but above all, it's, it's, it exposes God's true character, that God is the one who called Abraham and commanded Abraham to a certain place that God himself provides. So God provided the word, and God provided the purpose, and God provided the place, and God will provide the sacrifice. But in this narrative, in Genesis chapter 22, we are told of the relationship between God and Abraham. It was a trust perfect relationship. Let me ask you this question, fellow Christians, especially Seventh day and the discussions tonight. Is our relationship with God trust perfect relationship? Can we, like Abraham, talk to God in prayer by faith and we can hear the answer of God and we will say to God, Lord God, here I am. You know, it is interesting that the culture during that time was very patriarchal, but not only patriarchal, but very respectful between God, who is the father of everybody, and Abraham, who is his chosen son. And listen to the narrative in verse 2. Then God said, Elohim, take now your son, your only son whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Pause for a moment, dearly beloved. Something is not right with this verse. Although in the Hebrew, if you will read the Hebrew uh, um, original language of Genesis 22, there is this missing um, particle or a rare particle of entity. It, the New King James Version Bible did not add the word please to these words when God said to Abraham, please, that's the, the Hebrew, the Hebrew expression, please take now your son, could have been the, the better translation. What it means is, God was trying, the, the, the book of Genesis chapter 22, specifically this chapter, tells us that God was testing Abraham. And now to soften the impact, God asked this question to Abraham. Uh, God asked this, uh, God commanded, I mean, Abraham, please take now your son. Now, 
earlier I said that there seems to be something not right here. Because we all know that in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Leviticus 18.21 and Deuteronomy 12 verses 12.31, uh, uh, offering your son is not God's, or sacrificing a child by killing a child is not God's way. That's a canonized way. That's, a, you know, those people who don't believe in God. But you might be asking, why was this verse included? And, and we were prepared in verse 1 because God was testing Abraham. And so to soften the impact, God said, please. And the culture around Abraham's family is that those, uh, I would say, those who don't believe in the one true God, sacrifices their, or a practice um, sacrificing their child, uh, uh, child or children. And so... We don't know the, the real reasons why God included this in His, uh, in His word to Abraham. But nevertheless, listen to the next few words of, uh, of this uh, nar narrative, of this story. <coughs> and offer him, Isaac, the only son, well, at least to, to Sarai, the promised one, as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I, tell, I shall tell you. And verse 3. This is now the response of Abraham. Look at the verbs of this, of this uh, narrative. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. All right, are you following me? <coughs> and, he, and Isaac, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. We, I have been telling you that God provided the word. And, the, and Genesis 22 talks about not only about Abraham's faith, but God's trustworthy character. That Abraham has a relationship with God because Abraham respectfully obeyed God without question. Isn't it beautiful as a Christian today if God says in His word and we perfectly trust Him and we perfectly obey Him? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful if we display the same kind of respect, the same kind of, of response like Abraham? That's why Abraham is a father of faith worthy of emulation. And then the Bible continues to say beautiful <laughs> words, beautiful narration. After he, he arose and did, his, uh, did what God had told him to do, then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar so off. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship. Amen. Did God told Abraham what he would be doing on a certain mountain that God commanded him to do? But I like how the narrative is unfolding. Abraham was telling his two servants that they will go to the place where God provided, a, where God told him to go with, with Isaac, and they will worship. What an experience for Abraham, but in his heart, he knows that he will be sacrificing his only son. And this is the, the expression of faith. The next statement is an expression of faith from the New King James Bible, Version Bible. And we will, and we will come back to you. How many? We. How many? Two. And we will come back to you. But isn't that a, a, an irony because Abraham needs to sacrifice his son? So two minus one equals how many? One. In the Bible narrative of Genesis 22, two minus one is still two. Because when God provides, miracles happen. Are you following me, dearly beloved people of God? We will come back to you. That is an expression of faith. He knows that God, whatever happens, God will fulfill His word. That He will become the father of many nations. So how could He become a father of many nations if even one of His 
promised child or one of his uh, his only promised child through through Sarai will be sacrificed. But then again, he continued. Abraham continued. So Abraham took the wood. Wow. He took the wood of uh, the burnt offering. Remember, this is a practice of the other countries surrounding the family of Abraham. But God commanded him for some reason as a test. And laid it on Isaac, his son. I Meaning to say, there is this youthful, uh, youthful energy and strength that he laid it on his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife. And I could imagine during that time there, was, there were no uh, modern... Um, uh, means of, 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 of light, probably this is uh, torchlight, I could just imagine. And, and took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. Here comes now the drama. We all know the story, but listen to what the Bible says to picture out what's going on in the heart of Abraham and Isaac. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, my father. And he said, Here I am, my son. In the first verse, God the Father, Abraham, his chosen son, was. they have a respectful relationship. They have a trust, perfect relationship because God will say, and Abraham will respond. In this sense, because respect begets respect, Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, Ask Abraham and Isaac respected his father. Friends, respect begets respect. If we are not respectful to others, how could others be respectful to us? If we cannot address other people with respect and courtesy, how could we address God with respect and courtesy? Because the source of respect and courtesy is God. Submission. It's in the dialogue of Isaac and Abraham. Just imagine what, what would happen to our church if a father and a son had a very respectful relationship. If, if, the, son will, if the father will say, okay, do this, uh, take this to your mom or, or carry this. Yes, dad, here I am, father. What a culture during that time, a, cult, a revolutionary culture that, that shows respect to, to the family and in essence, respect to God. The reason why there are many broken homes at our, in our time is because respect and courtesy disappeared because God is out of the picture. Beautiful words. Here I am my son. Abraham submitted to God and Abraham shows that submission to his son and his son submitted to him. Respect begets respect. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? An expression of education by Abraham, the patriarch, the pastor of the home that he instructed his, his, his son, his family, that for, for the cleansing of sin, there, there, for the remission of sins, there will be shedding of blood, and that's the lamb. And so Isaac inquired respectfully, Father, everything is ready. Where is the burnt up? Where is the up? Innocence. But I love what, what Abraham responded, and Abraham said, very classic. My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. What a picture of son, of a father and a son. What a picture of a family resolved in unity. Whatever happens, that they will worship God at the mountain that God had told them to go. God provided the word. God provided the place. God will provide the sacrifice. So the two of them went together. You know, if the two of you cannot agree together, you will not go together. So there is an agreement between Abraham and Isaac. A beautiful picture. A beautiful 
a beautiful story that a father and a son with respecting each other, submitting one to another, and submitting to God. Do we still find this kind of relationship in our Christian homes? And then they came to the place of which God had told them. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Isaac is a young person. He could have resisted. He could have said, you know what? Please don't, don't kill me. Don't take my life. And he could have escaped. But again, there is this unity. There is, I mean, unity. Perfect trust in the Word of God. Beautiful picture. Trust perfect picture. And Abraham stretched out his, his hand and took it, the knife to slay his son. And then God ultimately, because God knew what's in the heart of Abraham, God knew what's in the heart of Isaac, that God is trustworthy, that Abraham and Isaac passed the test. And so God provided the message, the messenger and the message. Verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Again, words of, of endearment. And so he said, here I am. And God said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything with him. Do not lay, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you respect God, since you have not withhold your son, your only son, from me. Fear is respect. <clears throat> fear, fear of God is reverence to God. God provided the word. God provided the place. God provided the sacrifice. God provided the messenger. And God provided the guarantee. What else could we say to the God we worship tonight? That's why you're here. We worship the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of, the, of those who believe in the word, his word. What a picture. You know, some of us may not have a very good relationships with our with our fathers. Some of us may not have a good relationship with our mothers. Some of us may not have a good relationship amongst our, our family members. But when we read through Genesis 22, we see a picture of respect and submission to each other. Church, we're emphasizing in Hinsdale and family togetherness. If the family is strong in the faith, our church will grow. But if our families are not strong in the faith, our church will not grow. God provides. Isn't, isn't God worthy of praise and worship? That's why when we sing, when we worship, let's express it. Let's express it that God is really worthy as we remind ourselves of the story of Abraham. Just don't sing just for the sake of singing. Sing. Because the stories that we have heard are true and faithful. Let us bow our heads. Father in heaven, we are very grateful for this peaceful Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. I am very grateful, Lord, that we are still, we are still faithful to you although some of our some of us may feel like we're tired some of us may feel like we're burned out some of us are just going through the rivers of, of, of routine of, of, of everyday chores or mundane activities but we still came to observe the Sabbath the seventh day of the week, because we worship the God of Abraham, who is trust perfect. 
God in our midst. And so as we worship you, Lord, as we go to service at it, as we go back to our families, may we be reminded of the relationship between you and Abraham, and Abraham and Isaac. That our relationship with, with our families will also be like that. Lord, we're struggling. It is hard, especially in this day and age. But we ask by faith that you will provide for us the means and the ways that we will be like you and like Abraham and like Isaac. Faithful to the very word of God. Thank you, Lord, that you could bring us here. May we receive your blessings for, for us and for our family. In the loving name of the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham. Amen.